hey guys welcome back to another video um <clears throat> today i wanted to come and talk to you guys about um how i've been maintaining working from home as well as homeschooling while i'm working and i say while i'm working because those two tasks do happen simultaneously and i have it that way intentionally before you think I'm nuts, uh, there is a method to my madness. Now, this is what works for me. It may not work for the average person. I will say that I do think I have the benefit of I used to be a teacher. Um, so I understand most of the curriculum. I taught middle school and elementary school. So um a lot of parents have challenges not only because they don't have time but because they don't get it because common core does not make sense let I me mean, just be there with you so you can shout hallelujah common core makes no sense it is i won't say anything bad because i'm still in education but it is extra af um if you know what i mean yes there is an easier way to do it than the answer choices yes there's an easy way to do it than the way your teacher the teacher taught your child yes 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 but thanks to the powers that be that probably never were educators, they decided to make everyone's life harder, thinking there's some benefit to it that we have not seen. And they want you or your child at this point, both of you, to know how to do things in ways that don't serve you any purpose. And I say that because most of the time, parents' frustration is... Uh, but you can get the answer like this instead of doing this, especially when it comes to math. Um, and you're right, you can. But having administered different state assessments, the questions are no longer, do you know how to do this? Or can you get the correct answer? Their answer choices are literally requiring them to solve it a specific way, or they have to be able to identify the type of way. And what really, really sucks, I know I'm on a little soapbox here, but let me have it because I know you were here with me. Um, it really sucks because, you know, as an educator, when I was teaching, I, um, would always teach my kids different methods to solve a problem when I taught math. And then I would let them choose whatever was best for them to solve it because I wanted them to learn the skill and the concept. Can you add, can you multiply? Do you not divide? Do you know which do first in PEMDAS? But over time, I did have to adjust my instruction to, guys, I'm going to show you these 19 different ways to add one plus one because I don't know which way it's going to be on the test. And you are not the only one frustrated. You're not. And this is why teachers and educators are underpaid because we are frustrated too because we see these things roll out each year and we're like, what is this and why are we doing this? But yes, sir, we will do it because this is how we pay our bills and take care of our children. And we love your kids enough to, if the state says this is what they need to know, we will make it as fun and enriching as possible to teach them how to add one plus one, 19 different ways instead of just putting one dot and another dot and saying one, two. We now have two dots. Nope, we have to throw in some trigonometry and calculus and a little bit of other stuff just to jazz it up just a little bit. Anyways, off soapbox. So I've been there. So I do believe I benefit from being on both sides, educator and parent. And that actually is part of my passion. And I love uh, sharing educational stuff and parenting stuff um, because those those that's my life and so a lot of my personal business uh, fruition mental health um, is mental health and education collision focus it is not just keep yourself sane but it's also keep yourself sane and be a good parent and that balance can be really hard in that this pandemic has really brought that out and it's unfortunate because I know people are trying their best and working their darnest and at this point for some people are choosing whether they will pay bills or let their kids fall behind academically and that should not be a question and I know at this point you guys are seeing teachers are working their butts off calling your children messaging them video chat zoom drive-bys parades they're doing the most happy teacher appreciation week um to all the teachers out there thanks for all you do um because 
it is harder to do this online than it is in person to be honest and to think you know with your kid running around while you're trying to work we have 30 plus of those in the classroom only certain classrooms in elementary are capped in uh, amount of kids you can have in the classroom and after a certain grade level as many can fit will be in your class um, when I taught middle school my my first year teaching I had up to 43 kids in the class and my second year teaching I had up to 39 and um, yeah so uh, I'm not being insensitive to the fact that it's difficult with your one to five or six kids that you may have it's hard but it's harder when that's multiplied by five or six. Um, and so um, please extend your grace when school starts back. But anyways, this video is about how I'm balancing this situation. So, you know, now I'm no longer teaching. I am a school counselor. Love, love, love what I do. I still talk to kids all day. I am very privileged in that at my campus, I do have a few other hats I wear, but as long as I meet my deadlines, they do not take precedence over counseling. My goal is to make sure our kids are good and I do this day and night. Emphasis on night right now. Um, some of the kids are sharing technology uh, and so some of them can't get on to the evenings. The young ones use it first, the high school ones that are about to graduate use it first. So I have kids messaging me as late as 2 a.m. If I am up, I do respond. Um, I just, talk to them when I can because um, I've had kids weekly reach out to me with devastations or crises or tragedies in their family that has nothing to do with COVID but sucks worse during a pandem pandemic and they needed to talk and I'm who they thought of and I'm grateful that um, they know to think of me or that I'm available to them whether we are near or far. So I'm talking to kids or on Microsoft Teams. I don't really video chat them so texting but via team so it is tracked um people know i'm talking to the kids or i can submit you know the days and the time I'm talking to kids um it is less formal but i've noticed it hasn't changed much because i've had really close relationships with kids so they still tell me all their business um we're at a point now where so many of my sweeties are just texting me good morning every morning and it is amazing um so i am still working and then i also have meetings um for the other hats that I wear, I have a grade level meetings. I tend to give updates for the other hats that I wear. I'm over special ed testing. I'm over kids who need to be monitored in case they need to be tested. I'm over 504. I, I do stuff. I do stuff. Um, and so I created a schedule and I decided one i need to wake up at 7 45 every day my first meeting is usually at nine if i wake up at 7 45 i have time to go for a walk which i mentioned in another video i go for a walk every day for at least 30 minutes first thing in the morning if i have time meaning i don't have a nine o'clock meeting i also jump rope for at least 10 minutes and then i also uh do some type of like hit circuit or whatever i can think of spur the moment with the time i have my son does go with me so According to TEA, kids have to have at least 140 minutes of movement a day. We did try to incorporate this in class and PE and gym and stuff like that. Doesn't always happen, but I go out twice a day, so my son has to come with me twice a day. I know if you have multiple kids, you need a break. Take your break. If you need to make one of those times going by yourself, then go by yourself. Um, but I have my son get out with me, so he is burning energy since we will be in the house because we do not go anywhere. Um, as we are not supposed to um yes i'm sweating um but yes we don't go anywhere except the grocery store once a week and i typically do not even take him so um so yeah i um we get out we go for a walk so he gets up at 7 45 as well the days i don't have meetings at nine i'll be honest in the last week or so we sleep in and that's like eight between eight and nine um and then go for a walk we go for a walk every day but this first started with me 7 45 we will wake up we'll make a schedule and i must be downstairs until five like i mentioned in my other video um and during this time my son has a has a computer that is behind me i'm sitting at one thing so for example i'm in my car right now but i'm here doing work say if my 
the camera I'm using was my laptop. I'm doing work here and say the back seat. My son is facing that other wall doing work on his computer. I am fortunate in that he does. He already he has a gaming computer that he's now using as a schoolwork computer. Um, and he does a minimum of four hours of work a day. Um, up to five and so we go for a walk he eats breakfast I usually eat breakfast later but I do cook breakfast every morning just because it's a thing of just using time being productive and not sitting all day so I cook breakfast we eat breakfast he gets on the computer uh, about 80% of his work he can do independently um, only usually math go figure with the common core is it something he needs to ask me about uh or ask me for help especially for stuff they hadn't learned yet because we got out of school and i have to give him a mini lesson so um if you're thinking oh well, he's on the computer all day i am having to stop working to give him mini lessons for things he doesn't know how to do yet because he hadn't learned yet so i do have to stop and like teach he is easy to teach and I'm blessed in that way. Um, but this requires me writing on notepad, doing an example, explaining it out, um, have him writing definitions to words he's using. What is a prime factor? What is a factor? What um, What's composite number? What's a prime number? I have him Google those terms um, that he's not familiar with, write down the definition. Then I go over some examples with him, have him help me solve a few, just as I would as a teacher. And then he moves on. Um, I do... I was able to find programs that uh, kind of have a demonstration video first and then practice problems and then a quiz. So he does have to complete all of those steps. Um, and so Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, he does two hours of math and two hours of reading, whichever order. Typically, if I have a meeting, he he does reading at the times of my meetings because he does not typically need assistance with his reading assignments. So that's how we work that out for me to be undisturbed during meetings. Um, so he'll do his two hours reading typically while I'm in a meeting. Um, and then he'll do two hours of math and hopefully I'm not in a meeting. There are days I am and he has to just sit and wait or he gets it wrong enough times where to give him a different problem um, or he'll exit out and choose a new skill. Um, and so that's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesdays and Thursdays. He does one hours, of, one hours, one hour of math, one hour of reading, one hour of science, one hour of social studies. He picks an app for each of these. We just signed up for the free brain prop. So he's doing that now for science and social studies. Um, and it is not, you know, since since it's clicking, um, he does have to like uh, answer the questions at the end of a reading um, in his notebook. He does use his spiral. He does write every day. And Monday through Friday, after he's done his four hours of core subjects, he then does um, he then does uh, handwriting. Um, so I have him now. He's been writing certain scriptures pretending to children ten times in cursive to practice handwriting. Or I'll just give him like an affirmation he has to write so many times in cursive, um, and that can take up to an hour depending on how long the sentence is or how many times he has to write them depending on the circumstance. Then every day by six thirty, we uh, go back outside. I usually go for a run. We run at least three miles a day. Um, and then I do some type of strength training with the kettlebell or some weights, depending on my workout. He does do the workout with me. Um, I do modify them. He'll do just jumping jacks and sit-ups. Um, if you've never seen my son, he's very slim naturally. So, um, I don't overwork him, but he is in really good shape. Um, he likes to play basketball. He's played basketball for two seasons. So he, he can keep up. He will run the three to four or five miles with me um, we break as needed but we do well um so this has been beneficial we kind of know what our day will look like each day instead of waking up like uh, another day in the house it's like oh time for this up oh, time for this oh we get to do this now oh we're going to do this now no we're going to do this now and he's not on the laptop all day or on the computer all day on um, Fortnite all day i know he's still getting some sort of an education he he messages his teachers. I message his teachers. Uh, he does his assignments. Um, I don't have him focus on those assignments as much because they're really easy because teachers are giving lighter loads and I need him to be busy while I'm busy. So I'm less distracted when I'm working. Um, however, the days when my workloads are lighter, which happens, um, then 
uh, I make sure that I'm busy the four hours that he's going to be working because, you know, he has at least four hours of work each day, regardless of what day of the week it is. So that'll be I'll cook dinner that day that I'm done early or um, I'll cook an extra meal, something we've been having a taste for, or I'll do a longer workout. I'll check emails. I'll apply for loan forgiveness. I'll call dentists, um, doctors. I'll, I'll do stuff that I need to do. Um, that I can do now instead of saying I'm gonna do it later. I'll do it then until he's done. And then we're both done with our day at the same time. Um, so this isn't a matter of keeping myself busy the whole time, which I previously mentioned because my, the goal is to be productive, not busy and come out of this stronger than when we went in. So um, we are doing the minimum of what we need to do each day. He would be in school eight hours a day. I have taken into account, some people are like four hours or one or two hours of each subject, because I'm an educator, I know that your children are not getting more than um, an hour and a half per subject, if you didn't know. Let me throw that out there. Um, this The school day is eight hours, right, give or take. But you have to cons con consider, they eat breakfast at school, they eat lunch, or they have breakfast and lunch time, whether your child eats or not. And they also have to transition between each classroom um, even in elementary, they transition between subjects. Um, and those transitions, even if they're scheduled for five to 10 minutes in high school for transitions, between sitting down, going over the rules, going over what we're going to learn today, let's go over the board, let's go over the rules, and then let's get our stuff together, clean up the room before we go to our next class. Your child on average is getting anywhere from 45 minutes to 90 minutes of instruction per subject each day. So the days he's getting two hours makes up for the days he's only getting one hour of that subject. And that is just enough. I am not going to have him two hours on each subject every day. That's not realistic. That is not good for anyone's health <laughs> at this time. Um, so I do not do anything ridiculous. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Like I said, from being in the classroom, I know he wouldn't be doing that, be doing math for that long if he was at school. So there's no reason for him to be doing math at that long at at home either. So that's why I say his his workload is technically four hours because um, on average, your child is probably only learning six-ish hours a day when you consider transitions, break times, uh, elective courses, PE, band, whatever those breaks from core, there may be maybe be learning five hours, five and a half hours on average academic course subjects. So four hours is good for him. He's in fifth grade, going to sixth grade. That works for us. Um, so I would encourage you um, to find something that works for you. Similarly, find a time to get up in the morning. How are you going to start your day each day to get it off on the good foot? How can you keep your child working um, and accomplishing something? If the, My son already knows if it's something too difficult that he needs a lot of work to do and it's a day I have meetings, he has to skip that skill for the day and do it on a day I don't have meetings because I don't have meetings every day. Now, if you're a person that has meetings every day, um, you may have to adjust to where you get up earlier and do schoolwork earlier or you do your work in the day in school in the evening whatever works for you i'm not saying this is the best option this is what we've had to do and what has worked for us um and it's been getting us through some sometimes we're like oh man today went by really fast and that's because we're doing something almost every hour of the day um i don't eat after 8 p.m so he usually eats dinner with me when we come in from our 6 30 workout clean the kitchen showers and we're in um initially we had bedtime he would typically go to bed at nine, no later than 10. Um, but because we're not having to get up two hours early to wake up, get dressed, and then drive an hour to work, I don't make him go to bed early. Um, we're stuck in the house and he's working during the day. We're going outside. So I let him watch Netflix until probably about 11. And then I have him put it on a timer if he is still awake so that it's off by midnight. And he still doesn't sleep in past 9 a.m. Either way it goes. But again, if it's a day, if I need to wake up early, he wakes up when I wake up, and we we match our we match our times, our schedules, so that we're all done with our day at the same time, and that we 
can leverage each other's time if that makes sense so i hope this helps if you have any other questions or tips you want me to share that i'm doing if i was talking too fast or you need me to go more in depth in something let me know um i will do that for you no issue um but thanks again for tuning in uh catch you on the next one